Good, good morning and welcome to Midweek Connection at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm David Welch. And we just are grateful for the opportunity that we have to read God's Word together and discuss it and uh, be in community with one another. So let me open this in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to read your Word. And I pray that the reading and the hearing of your word today would bring you glory and would transform our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for your Holy Spirit that is present with us. And uh, we look forward to uh, learning and hearing from you today, uh, for, again, for your glory. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to start today with, um, again, our lectionary texts and during... Uh, the season of Lent, there is frequently repetition, and since we generally do this on Wednesdays, uh, the cycle that comes through, we get our uh, Wednesday Psalms again during Lent, and so they're familiar to us, but it is important for us to be reminded regularly of God's Word. So starting this morning with Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Our second psalm is Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is, the Lord, is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Our Old Testament reading today is from Genesis chapter 50, starting in verse 15. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, 
in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household, and Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children to the third generation. The children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were also born on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to you and bring you up out of this land to the land that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So Joseph made the Israelites swear, saying, When God comes to you, you shall carry up my bones from here. And Joseph died, being 110 years old. He was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. Our New Testament epistle comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the, the discernment of spirits, to another, various kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Our gospel reading today is from Mark chapter 8, starting verse 11 and going through 21. The Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you still talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, Do you not yet understand? Our third psalm is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. 
One thing I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I see. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And our final song today is Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. A sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God you will not despise. Do good in Zion and your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, that you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, before we started today, David and I were talking a little bit about how interesting this collection of, of scripture texts are and we were trying to think of uh, what what is something that connects them all and i started thinking immediately uh especially uh, in light of the genesis passage we've been following this joseph story uh, uh from genesis and this is the culmination of genesis this is the last chapter of genesis where joseph is um, the the primary character in the story and it's his uh, acknowledgement of, of God being sovereign uh, and God being able to work uh, difficult uh, things into a good outcome in fact God orchestrated the whole of the event such that um, all of the evil that had befallen Joseph God used 
uh, in order to save the people of Israel. Not only did Jacob get to see his son again, so you get the story of death to life, but, um, but Jacob's other sons, the rest of them, are still alive and therefore able to continue uh, the people that were chosen by God for God's purposes. But one thing that I was thinking about, and, and his name doesn't even come up today in the text, is, is, the, is one of the older brothers whose name is Judah. And how Judah, being a part of the tribes of Israel, um, Judah, who in a lot of scripture texts is really kind of a jerk uh, frequently, Judah is not a, a really uh, kind or compassionate character. We, there's lots of stories you, you can read. Um, they're all there in uh, Genesis uh, earlier. Um, but how Judah uh, is from the biblical genealogies that we have of Jesus, that Judah is the, uh, the father that extends the line that ultimately results in Jesus. And I started wrestling with that because here at the end of Genesis, it's Joseph who is demonstrating the most Christ-like character. It is Joseph who is using the power and the authority that he has been given not to serve himself, but to serve other people. And Judah has been regularly the one that has used his power to serve himself. Uh, and uh, we, we get to the Corinthians passage that Paul is talking about the various gifts that are given to the people of God to be used for the community of God. But we see from our biblical texts all too often how people that are called by God and chosen by God do not always use their gifts on behalf of other people. But here is Paul talking about how God has given good gifts to everybody to be used for everybody, for the good of community. So really, in a way, what we're seeing is uh, that God is really ultimately no respecter of individual persons, that God can choose to work through the people that God chooses to work through. And rather than only working through Judah, who does become ultimately the ancestor of Jesus, Ju uh, God works through Joseph, who was the almost the youngest of brothers, uh, 11 out of 12. But God still used the gifts that he had given Joseph for the good of all of the community. Um, and, and so when I think about this from our perspective today, how too often do we want to give uh, accolades to prominent people uh, and assume that just because somebody is uh, a uh, well-known, well-liked, um, even someone who serves the community really well, how possible is it that we overlook the younger brother, per se? that we want to give attention to this person just because of their powerful demonstrations of gifts, but fail to realize that sometimes the unsung hero, the Joseph, if you will, would actually be utilizing their gifts for the betterment of the community. Um, and so when I think about how that relates to our gospel reading from Mark, uh, how is it then that the Pharisees come and argue with Jesus about demanding a sign and then demanding that Jesus uh, uh, fulfill whatever um, prerequisites the scribes and the Pharisees might have in their mind as to how Jesus should be acting? And Jesus is like, you don't, you don't get it. God has always acted in ways that are um, contrary to the normal human understanding things, that God continues to act in a way that God is going to be himself glorified, and we are going to be left marveling at God's glory, because the way we want to do things don't always turn out the way God wants to do things. And even when the, fair, uh, even when the disciples of Jesus um, get onto the boat and start arguing about bread, where Jesus has just provided these amazing miracles of feeding the 5,000 and feeding the 4,000 with minimal bread and minimal fish and of the baskets that are left over. And he, and he questions them, and Jesus questions, how many baskets left over did you collect after the first time? And they say 12. And you think about, well, what does 12 really refer to? It does refer back to the sons of Jacob, the people of God 
that God provided for them, in this case from the Genesis passage, in Egypt. Nobody would have expected it, but God provided what they needed. God provided the food they needed in an unusual way that the 12 would survive and continue to uh, exist on the earth and ultimately lead to Jesus. And then the second one, how many baskets do they have left over? Seven. And seven, we automatically are taken back to creation where God established the pattern of work and rest and how on the seventh day we were to uh, trust that God would provide. And not only did God provide in the original of the creation in the Garden of Eden, everything Adam and Eve needed was created by God and available to them, uh, but also in the Exodus passage that immediately follows after Genesis, the people go out into the wilderness and God provides food for them every day of the week. He provides food for them on, on the first through the sixth day and then provides double the amount on the sixth day so that on the seventh day they can rest in God's presence. And so Jesus is equally frustrated, I believe, with his disciples, just as he was with the Pharisees. They all have an idea and an opinion on, well, God has to do things this way. God has to do things according to my schedule or according to uh, my desires when, in fact, God is working always according to his plan. God is always working for his glory. God is always working in ways that are surprising to us as humans, but ultimately, again, for his glory and for our good. He didn't give a sign to the Pharisees because they had all of the signs of the Old Testament that are all pointing back to Jesus. He didn't even explain it well. Well, he explained it perfectly to the disciples, but they didn't even quite get it. How God has always been providing, always will provide, and now has provided himself. What do you, what do you think about that, David? Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, joy. I think um, in First Corinthians, especially, we see um, this is a passage we, we may know quite well, where Paul talks about spiritual gifts and the variety of spiritual gifts provided to the church. Um, and uh, kind of like the Pharisees, I think we often get caught up in thinking, well, God has to do things a certain way, or he um, has to speak through people who have certain gifts, uh, or um, you know, the we 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 get caught up in kind of the outward forms that uh, things take. Pharisees were concerned about about rules like hand washing and, and rituals and uh, not doing anything on the Sabbath, and they got so caught up in that that they they missed. They missed uh, the heart of the scripture, which is God's, it's God's love for us and his abundant provision for us. And I, I think we can get caught up in the same thing um, when, we, uh, when we consider the different ways that God's gifted each of us. Uh, Paul's reminder here is that the same spirit is at work in all believers. And no one says can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so for for all who who believe that Jesus is Lord and confess with their mouth and and who believe the gospel uh, that that Jesus that Jesus preached and that his disciples handed down to the church, the Spirit is at work in them, uh, even if they're uh, they're they. Um, even if the way that the Spirit is at work in them doesn't necessarily line up with our ideas about about how God uh, about how God should work, that, that's all kind of vague. You know, I'm having trouble coming up with uh, specific examples, but um, uh, maybe maybe for instance, one is that we put such a high priority on on uh, gifts like uh, the gift of uh, teaching. Or, uh, or prophecy, or um, you know, those who, who speak and proclaim to the congregation, like like Joel and, and on occasion uh, me, and yet the Spirit is just as at much at work in those who are serving God in different ways. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's exactly right. Uh, and so as we, as we wrap up today, uh, if you're watching this, I know that uh, God is working in your heart for, for his purposes. And I guess the question that we would all have to ask ourselves is, uh, what gifts has God given us and how can we utilize our gifts for the betterment of the Christian community? Some of you are here in San Angelo. Some of you are watching in, in other places. You are in the context where God has placed you. Uh, you might not even necessarily like that particular context, or there might be difficulties that you face that are unique to your certain circumstance. But God has given all of the gifts that are necessary. So maybe we should regularly be thinking, what gifts has God given me? What gifts can I use to advance God's kingdom, to be a good witness about it in God's kingdom, uh, and to build up the community of faith? So if you're watching this today, ask yourself that question. What gift has God given me? Or what gifts has God given me? And how can I utilize them in community? He doesn't call any of us to be lone rangers. He doesn't call any of us to go uh, totally solo. Uh, there might be times when we do feel isolated from others. I know that Joseph did feel isolated from everybody, but he maintained his faith in God that ultimately it became for the community, not just for himself, but even as he exercised um, self-control and all of those other things um, that resulted in uh, a, ben a benefit and a gift to the wider community. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this in prayer. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, those those wise words today, David. I appreciate that. Um, uh, let me close this in prayer. Uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being the giver of all good gifts. Thank you for uh, calling all of us to use our gifts to serve the community. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you. Uh, demonstrated through your servant Joseph uh, how that can be properly accomplished. Uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, one doesn't need to be uh, prominent in society to be a servant in your kingdom. Uh, so, Lord, forgive us for the ways that we do fall short. Lord, we are reminded in Psalm 51 that all of us have sin in our lives that need to be forgiven by you. All of us have ways that we can change in order to be a better servant in your kingdom. Uh, and Lord, I'm grateful that as you are the giver of all good gifts, you are the forgiver of all of our wickedness, and that you are calling us into a right relationship with you and calling us into a right relationship with each other, that all that we do, all that we say, all that we think about, Lord, be committed to your plan, your purposes, uh, your glory, and to the building up of the community of faith. We thank you and praise you for this time. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, one thing I actually have never really talked about before, if you're watching this and you're watching it on YouTube, I guess you can always like and subscribe and we can see how we can get uh, our opportunity to uh, share God's word out there in the broader community. But thanks so much. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.